All right. So we started learning Target 9 yesterday. You essentially know how to do the rest of learning Target 9. I just want to make sure I do it with you so that you are very careful in what you're doing. Um, so if you have an equation in general form of a hyperbola, it's the same thing that we've been doing to complete the square, yada, yada. But there's a negative because there's a minus sign, and you have to watch out for that the entire way through the question. Okay? So here is an equation in general form. I've got y squared minus 5x squared plus 20x equals 50. There is another y term besides the y squared, so that's going to stay where it is. The y is first in this problem. The so y is first in this problem, so I know that it is vertical. Vertical. So then with the negative 5x squared plus 20x, I'm going to take out a negative 5. So you have to be careful. If you're taking out a negative 5, that means you have to watch your signs inside the parentheses. So I'm going to have x squared, and then since I took a negative 5 out, I'll have a negative 4x in the parentheses. Because negative 5 times negative 4 will give you tw ne positive 20x back. Don't you have to divide on both sides? We're not even there yet. We haven't divided anything yet. Other questions so far? So it's very similar to what we did before. Yes, so we're going to complete the square. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and negative 2 squared is positive 4. So we're going to add 4, but when we distribute, we're multiplying by a negative 5. So we're adding negative 20 to the other side. So again, the whole entire moral of the story here is watch your negative. So I have y squared minus 5 times x minus 2 quantity squared equals 30. And just like a ellipse, the hyperbola equation has to equal 1. So we divide by 30. So we have y squared over 30 minus the quantity x minus 2 squared over 6 equals 1. That's fine. Again, very similar to what is ellipse, you just have to watch your negative. That's the only difference. The question wants you to find the foci and the vertices and the asymptotes and all that stuff, but this is going to get really messy really fast because if you start looking at it, we know it's vertical. What is the center going to be? 2, 0. But then what is A? the square root of 30, and b is the square root of 6. You know, that's going to get messy when you start doing your vertices, right? You can't really graph those. You have to estimate. And then if you're going to find c, we know that c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So that's c squared equals 36. So c equals 6. That's nice, right? Uh, so you could find the foci, it wouldn't, wouldn't be a big deal. But then the asymptote equations are going to get even messier because you have A divided by B or B divided by A for the slope, and you have two square roots, and so it's just going to get a little gross. So I'm not going to worry about graphing this one. Most of the ones in your homework will be nicer to do. Questions about the end of learning target 9, or questions about anything we talked about yesterday? Okay. So then... Learning target 10 is not very difficult. It's just taking a graph and writing an equation of the hyperbola. That's all we're going to do today is finish up learning target 10. I'm going to delete these real fast. Okay. If we're going to write an equation for the hyperbola, the first thing we need to know, or the four things we need to know, just like an ellipse, are the orientation, the center, A, and B. If you know those four things, you can write the equation, just like before. So what is this orientation? Vertical. This is learning target 10. Mm -hmm. 
We know the center, what's the center is given to us, it's not even labeled for us. So H is 2 and K is negative 4. So I should be able to write this much so far. I should have Y plus 4 squared minus X minus 2 squared. I know that much. Would you agree? Okay. Well, then we talked about this a little bit yesterday. We had the transverse axis. The transverse axis goes from vertex to vertex through the center. The transverse axis has a length of 2a. So just like in an ellipse, a is from the center to a vertex. All right? So in this case, a is 6, right? From here to here. That's 6. So if a is 6, then a squared is 36. Now, on your note sheet, you should be able to make out this box. Maybe. Mm -hmm. You should vaguely see it. Now, on your homework questions, the box won't be there. And so I need you to show you how to draw on that box. So that's how you're going to find your conjugate axis. So. So. From if the box isn't there, because most of the time it's not going to be there. The asymptotes will always be there. So what you do is you start from the vertex and you draw a line to the asymptote on each side. That's how long. That's how wide it's going to be. And so then you just connect. Okay, that's how that. That's where that comes from. It's not just some random box being drawn. Now the conjugate axis. What's that box represent? Well, the width of it is going to be the conjugate axis. So the conjugate axis goes to the center and touches the edges of each of those that box. There's not only really vertices there. The conjugate axis has a length of 2B. So B is going to be half of that, just like it was before. So B is from like here to here. So that one is 5. So that would be 25. No, that's fine. So again, to draw on the box, you start at the vertex, right here, and you draw a line to the asymptote. Yes, just to where it intersects the asymptote. Questions about that example? All right, then. I want you to try the second one. I'll give you a minute or two to try the second one, and then we'll go over that one. Okay, so this is what you should have for the second example. X minus zero is acceptable. So A is from the vertex to the center, so that was five, so it's five squared is twenty-five. B is from the center to the side of that box, so that's three, so three squared is nine. Get it? Any questions about that at all? Okay, then we are done with our target 9 and 10.